now please let me introduce our second speaker, uh, Katerina Nekrasova. She is the Deputy General Manager of the Enterprise Medical Procurement of Ukraine. MPU was created in 2018 and is a true child of the medical reform in Ukraine. Uh, it is credited with introducing transparency and predictability into public procurement. It manages centralized healthcare programs, including, for example, combating of HIV and other uh, socially significant diseases uh, uh, on request of the Ministry of Healthcare of Ukraine, as well as manages medical procurement uh, connected to the United 24 initiative. And uh, I know that Katerina is online. And uh, if we can now connect and start. Sure. Thanks a lot for the introduction. So I don't know, know what, I, what I have to continue <laughs> about MPE. So thank you a lot for creating such a space for communication between the government bodies and the potential suppliers that are interested in entering the Ukrainian market. For us in Ukraine, it's a really good and promising sign that we still have companies that are not only interested in the Ukrainian market, but are interested in working with the state institutions. That's really some kind of, that's important for us because this is about the recognition of the processes of the institution, not only in Ukraine, but in the like worldwide arena. So thanks a lot. And thanks to Irina for the presentation. We usually... Mm, use every analytics that that Irina is sharing. So everything that she's saying, believe me, this is the real situation in the market. So just let me know whether you can see my presentation now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So let us start from uh, the very beginning. Uh, it was already mentioned that we have been established in 2018, but um, generally the first procurements under the centralized programs of the Ministry of Health, they started in 2020. And then in 2020-21, we have obtained the centralized procurement agency status. In 2022, the managed entry agreements were introduced. We have obtained the international ISO anti-bribery certification. 2023 marked the procurement of vaccines, MRIs, linear accelerators, and 2024, it's about the three-year procurement planning for, for the majority of medical goods that we have. So, and now we're in 2024, and what we're focusing on, we're focusing on four mainstreams with the thought that MPE as the national agency that transforms the medical supply system to improve the quality of life of Ukrainians. We have four mainstreams at comprehensive provision of healthcare facilities with necessary medical goods. And it's about that we procure under the orders of the Ministry of Health on the one side and administer the specific procurement platform on another one. The modernization of infrastructure and logistics capacities. We have merged with the pharmaceutical warehouse and now investing heavily in its modernization because it's slightly, slightly not up to date and to price, but uh, the specificity is that it is located exactly in Kiev in a rather protected area and we, and we have the critical stocks of, uh, of the medical products exactly there. So the first is the development of institutional and financial system sustainability of MPE, and that, is, that aligns with Ukrainian legislation that in the coming years we have to undergo the corporatization procedure as state enterprise. And the fourth, but one of the most important seems to me, is Ukraine recovery in the healthcare sector. As it was mentioned, MPU as the authorized body for the procurement under the United 24 initiative of President Zelensky and the medical stream. So, and we are very proud of this cooperation and the results gained here. So here you can see the process of the cooperation between the MPU and the Minister of Health, because MPU was created in order to diversify the responsibilities of the Ministry of Health as forming the policy, they are creating the nomenclature, they are deciding what to buy and how many to buy, and the execution process is after MPU. That is why every question uh, regarding 
why not to buy something else or would you like to add something to your procurement list? That's, it's, that's not to the to MPU, it's to the Ministry of Health because they are forming the policy. They are structuring the healthcare ecosystem according to their priorities. But we're, and we're just supporting that with the, with the execution of the strategy. And here we are leaving the link to the uh, decree of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine where the whole list of centralized procurement is indicated. So, and speaking about procurement, so where is MPU in the Ukrainian pharmaceutical market? Here you can see that the retail in the Ukrainian market prevails, but MPU procurements, it's about the public procurement. And if we would have a deep dive in the MPU procurements and public procurements, we see that 32% of the whole public procurements, public in the medical sector were conducted by MPU in 2023. And speaking about the market structure, 39% of our procurements, according, like, according to the diagram, it's the medical devices, and 30.9% is medicines. So, um, he, here you can see some more information about what exactly MPE is about. We're not only about procurement of medicines, it's medical devices, it's medical equipment, it's ambulances, and even um, medical armored vehicles. So, and here are some numbers to show the path of of the last several years and to show the the mark the size of our procurements as i mentioned we have started procurement for budget funds in 2020 and totally over this years as of like as of july it's more than 27 billion grievances um, for medicines and medical equipment and more than 9.6 million for equipment. So in the majority of cases, as you can see here, the investments are made in the medicines and medical devices. But when it comes to medical equipment, it's the iterative programs that are changing from year to year. So, and here are some examples. It's one of the interesting projects that we had in 2023, and this is about the cooperation with the international companies. In 2023, we have procured 15 innovative linear accelerator systems. And this is the example of really successful entry to the market of Swedish business, is we have procured these linear accelerators from the Swedish company Lecta. It was not a direct procurement, it was a procurement from the authorized representative because we have some legislation specificity that does not allow us to go to the direct procurement with the with the medical equipment. But uh, now the first delivery has already started, as you can see in these pictures. And um, in July, August, oncology centers in Sumay, Cherkasy, Ternopil, they already received the first electroharmony linear accelerators. And this is a big step uh, in the Ukrainian healthcare sector because um, in Ukraine, such medical equipment is not available in any other uh, in any other region. And now those onco centers that have received this equipment are starting the preparation, or not starting, but finalizing the preparations for the full launch of this medical equipment. So. Um, how the supplier can understand how many would be procuring, how the demand collection process is going on and where to find our procurements. That is something that we would talk about here in, like, in the next slide. So step one for us, it's the demand collection and verification. When the Ministry of Health decides what to procure, they're informing us and through our external IT ecosystems mid data and a stock we start the demand collection processes um, the medical facilities 
are registered in our in our IT systems. We have more than three thousand users, and they are submitting their demand to the mm, to the to the products that we're asking for. So, step two, it's like the most important as suppliers engagement and procurement tools. After demand collection, verification, and obtaining demand orders with quantities from the Minister of Health, we're not always rushing to announce the procurement procedure. We communicate heavily with potential market participants, with our potential suppliers, and we really engage suppliers to go to us directly where it's possible and not through, through the authorized representatives in Ukraine. As you can see here, SAP Ariba. SAP Ariba, it's our secure tool for interaction with the suppliers. When we're starting the preparation of the procurement for the specific medical equipment, on our side, the draft of the technical requirements for this equipment is developed. But we understand that the market should, should give, give a feedback to the document that we developed. That is why in SAP Ariba, we're sharing this draft with all the suppliers that are registered there. And registration and like usage is free of charge. And we're asking them to share the feedback, to share the potential delivery terms, and to share the commercial offer in order to estimate the expected value of the procurement. So SAP Ariba, it's like one window approach for communication with suppliers when it comes to the marketing market consultations because all information is aggregated there. It's secured uh, according to the internal procedures, the uh, market, the results of the market consultations, the commercial offers received, the, this, has, um, this is a non-disclosure information. It's confidential. So that is why it is not available. You will never see the uh, commercial offers of other companies, but we're aggregating all of them. So, the next, it's Prozora. As if being the um, public body, we're obliged to use Prozora electronic platform for conducting procurement procedures. So, this is a bidding platform for tendering processes where MPE, as a state enterprise, announcing the tender publishing all the documentation that we need regarding the qualification criteria to the suppliers, the technical specifications, the contract draft, um, and then suppliers submit their offers through this platform. And the third one, it's Prozora Market. Prozora Market, it's like a module of Prozora, but uh, the specificity is that all the participants and products, they are pre-qualified. And um, the only thing the public procurement body needs is to publish the request for proposal and receive the commercial offer from the, uh, from the participants. And MPU, our organization is the administrator of the medical part of the Prozora market, which means that we are responsible for the qualification of the suppliers, qualification of the products, um, and forming technical specification to the products and the specific um, and it's it's really making the life for in the current in the current uh, situation easier because the procur the procurement bodies they do not have to develop the tender documentation the qual the all the qualification requirements to the supply to the product etc everything is done is done by us from that perspective so and step three, imagine that you have submitted your offer, uh, you've been qualified as a supplier, and then where the contract was signed, and we're coming to the contract execution. And what's important to understand, the contract cannot be changed after pu publication in the Prozora. It's not subject to negotiation. Everything that is published in Prozora, it cannot be changed according to Ukrainian legislation. The only possibility to change is to ask questions or send requirements through the system in the Prozora. Or 
and nothing. Everything, in case you're selected as a supplier, you have to sign the contract as it's published. We are not allowed to change them. The currency of the contract is Ukrainian Grivna, but for non-residents, uh, our organization makes payment in selected currency equivalent. It's euros or dollars. You would ask why? Just because we're the state enterprise and we're not allowed to have currency, um, to have contracts in currency uh, in other, in other like uh, USD or Euro. Only only Ukrainian agreement works for us. The second is bank guarantee. We understand that there are lots of currency fluctuations currently, and we're always willing to send, to share the prepayment with the supplier, but um we're we're implementing advanced advanced payment based on a bank guarantee after signing the contract for the whole sum um and the and the period of this prepayment can be no longer than 12 months because in a 12 months the supplier have to supply everything that is included in the contract so delivery terms it's dp or ddp key friction uh, it's usually key because we have the authorized warehouse here. We have our own pharmaceutical warehouse here. And, and when we understand that non-residents are interested in participating in the procurement procedure, the DAP key of region terms take place. But when it comes to the medical equipment, for example, we're not asking to supply to our warehouse, we're asking to deliver directly to the medical facility. That is why for medical equipment, we usually work only with resident companies because we require direct delivery, installation, and some educational services at place to make sure that medical medical equipment is not only bought but and can already be used because the final aim is to make sh is to improve the service delivery at the specific medical facility and not just to deliver the medical equipment so the next important point is terms of delivery so we're we're establishing the exact date of expected delivery at the time of mm, tender procedure at the prosor it is indicated it is publicly physical visible and it cannot be changed why because we're we're monitoring the stocks uh, throughout the ukraine and adjusting the delivery dates to the stocks that we have and in case there would be some some delays in delivery there would be potential stockouts unfortunately that is why we are usually asking suppliers to monitor precisely the delivery terms and inform us during the marketing con market consultations whether these delivery terms can be met or cannot by them. So then it's the shelf life. We have the general requirement of 70% shelf life for the for the medicines, for medical devices at 75% or of the total shelf life of the date of delivery. And maybe international pack for the military period medicines that are registered in Ukraine can be supplied in original international packing but with some specific supplementing documents and speaking about the um, registration in Ukraine uh, we're not always asking the registration in Ukraine at the moment of <clears throat> submitting the offer some of our tenders include um, the possibility to submit offer with non-registered products in Ukraine and only after signing the contract ye, the supplier have the obligation to register this product in Ukraine but with a very strict timeline because depending on the registration the delivery terms cannot be cannot be changed and we understand that in case this product would not be registered in this specific period of time it won't be delivered according to the delivery terms that in the contract. So. And step four, while the medicines, medical devices, they are delivered to the logistics warehouse of our authorized partner or to our medical supply branch, uh, they, go, they are distributed to the regions. So... When it comes to these, uh, when it comes to these points, this is about ensuring the entire supply um, cycle of medical supply 
its optimization of the logistics processes. We have stocks of critical needed ice items in the warehouse, and the stocks um, allows us to minimize the risk of treatment interruption when it comes to the uh, life life therapist. But as I, as I mentioned, there are specific categories of product that are not delivered to our warehouse, uh, but that are delivered directly to medical facilities, for example, medical equipment, as it was with cleaning accelerators. So, and here are some words about the special projects. Um, within United 24, he, here you can see the nomenclature that are reflecting the nowadays reality. We are procuring lots of ambulances because lots of ambulances are suffering every day and it's never enough ambulances in Ukraine. The next is the medical armored vehicles. They were procured from the Canadian manufacturers, the RNE, and we've been expecting for them for a long period of time because this, this was the special order for Ukraine and the, their manufacturing facility. Uh, and from our side, we would also would like to thank to all the uh, partners supporting Ukraine because exactly this procurement, it was with the help of our partners. It was not the uh, state budget expenditure and the joint actions, they always help to move forward. So thank you for that. It's our joint goal to stand here and to be as much cooperative as only possible. So thank you. That was that was everything from my side. In case you have any questions, oh, please feel you. free. It was uh, like a lovely presentation and uh, also a wonderful touch at the end with that video. So we see... Uh, yeah, it's so easy to become too theoretical, uh, but then you see uh, the real impact that uh, the international help and the mechanisms enabled by the MPU provides. We actually have a question in the chat, so if we have limited time, I would ask that first. The question comes from Daniel Manestig. He represents, I know, the company Jettinge. He asks, a Swedish manufacturer that has distributors in Ukraine who should register in SAP Ariba? Manufacturer, distributors, or both? And that's the question. Very good question. Uh, you can do both, but the fact that in case you're planning to participate in procurements of MPU directly, uh, for example, if it's medical advice or medicine, it's definitely better to have a self-registration there. But in case it's the distributor of your company that is planning to be part of our procurements, the distributor can register as well. The only thing that have to be understandable, SAP Ariba, it's for market consultations only and does not um, grant access here to the procurement procedures at the Prozor system. In order to be able to submit the commercial, like, your proposals for the Prozoro during the public procurement process, you have to be registered in one of the authorized platforms of Prozoro. And the and this registration, this participation is already not for free as far as I'm, as far as I remember. Also, depending on the um, tenor that you're planning to participate, you have to understand that local medical facilities, they do not, they are not allowed to work with non-resident companies because they do not have that supplementary documentation for importing, etc. So in case your target is uh, regional procurements, it's definitely your Ukrainian representative who has to participate in those standards. And MPU is not connected to the regional procurements. So regional procurements are conducted by hospital, by hospitals, medical facilities on their own through Prozora. Thank you. Uh, excellent answer. And uh, I hope that, Daniel, I hope that that was a good answer for your question. If you want to know more, uh, you can always, we can always do a follow-up and then, aha, here he answers. Yes, thanks. Uh, 